up you for me here's my worship all of my worship receive my worship all of my worship here is my worship all of my worship I give my 
myself away so you can use me here I am here I stand Lord my life is in your hands Lord I long to myself to you I give myself away I give myself away so you can use me I give myself away result of that you declare that by your stripes those of us who are sick those of us who are afflicted we are healed you said you was bruised for our iniquities 
and the chastisement of our peace was upon you and by your stripes we are healed thank you for taking our grief upon you thank you for taking our sorrows upon you we're grateful while you're out there in the audience while you're out there just lift your hands to the lord extend your hands to the lord as an expression of extending your heart to him lord i give all of my proclivities to you i give all of my ideologies to you i give all of myself to you i yield to you today this is the day that the lord has made and i will rejoice and be glad in it nonetheless it doesn't matter what i'm going through this morning Nevertheless, it doesn't matter what I went through all night, toil all night long. It doesn't matter, but I give myself to you in your entrusted hands. I give myself to you. Confidently, I give myself to you. Life is not my own. I yield, I yield, I yield. I give myself. I give myself. I give myself. I give myself. All of me. All of me. I give it all to you. Every fiber, every aspect of my life, I give it to you. I give you my bills. I give them to you. I give my heartaches. I give it to you. My emotional stress. I give it to you. You can handle it. You said, "Come unto me, all ye that labor in heaven, laden." <laughs> And I give you rest. From all of your labor, I give you rest. From all of your toiling, I give you rest. From all of your trying to do it yourself, I give you rest. Thank you, Lord, for knowing our limitations. Thank you for knowing that we can only take so much. And then you tell us to cast our cares upon you because you care for us. To cast all of our burdens upon you. <laughs> Glory to God. We thank you, Lord, because we have a place where we can come and find rest for our soul. We bless you today. As David declared, I will bless the Lord at all times that his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Anybody come to praise God today? Anybody come to lift him up today? He said, if I be lifted up, I draw all men unto me. Whatever you're going through, God said, I take it. I take it through your praise. I interpret your praise today. I know what you're going through. I know what you need. Thank you. We give you the praise and all the glory. And the church said amen and amen. Thank God today. Thank God for all of you that came out. Amen. This afternoon, what a what what a, a glory it is to, to look out and see all these beautiful faces out here. Amen. See these smiles. Amen. Somebody say smile. <laughs> Yes, now where Kirk at? Kirk around here. And the well, can we get a smile? Amen. A smile tells a, a lot of things about an individual. Again, we thank God for all of you who came out to be with us today. Sunday afternoon. Amen. God said this is declared a miracle Sunday. Anybody looking for a miracle today? This is declared a miracle Sunday. Whatever you need today, miraculously, I want you to know, if you can't get it from your neighbor, you can surely get it from God. Somebody say, Lord, I need it today. I need it. We surely, we have a word from the Lord today. If I would get uh, T.D. Jakes on the phone, he'll say, let's go to work. Amen. Let's go to work. Let's go to work. There is a word from the Lord. Those of you who have your Bible, turn to Luke chapter 11. We're going to work the text today. We're going to certainly do some exegy today. Amen. And go into the word of God because there is a word from God today. Amen. I will be coming from the subject today. Let us pray. Let us pray. I don't know what that means to you when you hear the word pray. Amen. To some of us, it means to talk to God. To other of us, of us, it is to take my burdens unto the Lord and leave them there. 
then to others of us we are going through some some trying times in our life and we need God to comfort us the word prayer simply means to talk to God somebody say talk to God let us pray let us pray anytime you go to an assembly of any type and if they have a reverence for God or an honor for God they are started off with prayer they started off with invocation they were started off and some would go even further to, to even go into some eloquency of their expression to God hello everybody I'm going to stop and pause again and say hello to everybody because I got a huge family out in the audience today amen and I'm so happy that you all are coming to be with us today but surely there's a word from the Lord and I want to share it with you from my heart from his heart to you and the subject is let us pray let us pray that word let is a permission it's a permission God is permitting us to talk to him you know the Bible does say to us that the Lord is in his holy temple that all the earth keeps silent before him and somebody said these words said hush hush the Lord is talking hush hush the Lord is talking it is important for us to understand that God gives us a privilege to talk to him a privilege to come before his throne the holy throne of God that is a permission that is I'm permitted to go before a holy God eh. that's why it's so important for one to, to be saved that's why it's so important for one to, to give their life to the Lord because I want to read something to you I read this earlier uh, to my deacon uh, as we sat here I read this to him and I want to read it to you because this is something this is really something uh, because some of us don't get it and God wants us to get this it's, a, it's important that we get it so I'm going I'm to do a little sidebar and then I'm going to get right back to the message because I think this is very prevalent uh, to what is going to be stated foregoing in the message listen to this from Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 17 I want the latter part but I'm just going to go ahead and read the, the early on part because everybody's familiar with this no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper tell somebody say no no weapon and watch this now and then it, it, it goes further to say not only the weapons won't prosper but it, it gives us a permission it gives us an authorization and it says and every tongue <laughs> somebody says shut your mouth <laughs> and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn in other words God said you'll judge those words yourself whatever they say good or bad towards you or about you you can judge those words matter of fact you can denounce those words you can say oh no not not today <laughs> not not in my life that ain't gonna happen in my life matter of fact i discount what they just said in my life that's what the authority that god is giving us watch this this is what i want to go with this because i'm about to take off y'all watch this it says and this is the inheritance of the servants of the lord the children of god somebody say christian I qualify. It, it, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And watch this. And their righteousness and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So because we're righteous, we are authorized to go before the throne of God. <laughs> and, and, and the beauty of it is, is not my righteousness. It's his righteousness. He have, he have, uh, 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 how, how you want to say it, Missy? He have uh, uh, bequeathed unto me his righteousness. <laughs> Where you get that from, boy? Uh, but see, 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 see. God, God gives us things that we ourselves can't. We we can't handle it by ourselves. I, I can't. I I really can't. I can't be holy by myself. I, I can't do, I can't even stand to be holy by myself. I don't know about you, but but I can't. I, 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 sometimes I can't even imagine how in the world 
do I do this? I'm, 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 I find myself saying some things, and, 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 and it baffles me. How? You said that? I mean, boy, why, that ain't your normal. You know, where I come from, we said some other stuff. Y'all know what I'm saying? Um, you know, before I got saved, you know, we said some other words, you know, some other choice words. That if it came to my mind, it came out my mouth. You know, anybody else like that? Uh, if it came to my mind, it came out my mouth. And, and not only did it, if it came to my mind, it came to my mouth. If it came to my mind, it came to through my hands. <laughs> oh, y'all, yeah, yeah, um, let me stop. Let me stop. I'm telling on myself. I'm telling on myself. But, but it's important. That's why, that's why the Lord is saying this. Watch this. That's why the Lord is saying to us today, let us pray. Somebody said, let us pray. Because prayer is important. Prayer, prayer, watch this. Prayer uh, guards me. Prayer uh, uh, protects me from out here, but it also protects me from myself. See, prayer, prayer is a privilege. Prayer, prayer is an, an opportunity that God says, Anthony, I'm inviting you to come into my presence. Oh, how valuable that is. It's just like going to the bank and they open up the vault and say, you're welcome to go in there and get anything you want. Anybody going to uh, say, I ain't going in there? <laughs> so, so that's God. That's God saying, I'm opening up heaven for you to come in and get whatever you want because it's going to be baffling it's going no no, no take that back it's not going it's not going to be confusing it's not going to be confounding it's going to be a shame for me to get to heaven and see everything that belonged to me and I didn't take advantage of it while I was here that would be disappointing wouldn't it? it it'll really be it'll be really disappointing and sometimes we are disappointed when we find out we have some benefits on our job we didn't take advantage of and then when they tell us we had the benefits we get mad because I went ahead my paid all my money to have my tooth pulled when I could have used my benefits isn't that a shame? And the same thing with prayer. Prayer, and I heard the Holy Spirit so clear when he told me. He says, let us pray because prayer to the believer is God's GPS system that has been de designed for us because it's, it's God's positioning system. Y'all help me tonight. But, uh, today, help me. But, but, but watch this. It's important to have a GPS system in your car. Sometimes, you know, I'm, if you're anything like me, you, you go, you take, you do what the GPS tell you to do. And then they're telling you, say, reroute, reroute. I'm lost. <laughs> I need you. I, I'm depending on you to get me where I'm going. I'm trying to get to a destination. And you're telling me to reroute. You're telling me uh, you turn, you turn. If I make a U turn, I'm going back in the same direction that I just came from I'm confused now I'm saying I don't need you because you're not helping me you hurting me but 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 here is God to us God says I'm your GPS I'm your positioning system I can get you from point A to point E I mean point B if you follow my directions that's all God is saying God is saying through prayer if you listen to me because that's what prayer is prayer Puts us in a position where we're not listening to you. You ever listen to your mind? Your mind be racing and your mind be going. You have so many thoughts going through your mind. And see, prayer puts us in a place where we only hear God. Oh, because I don't know about you, but this brain right here. Oh, this mind can work. This mind can can really uh, come up and conjure up some some stuff. You know, because but now watch this. And I, I'm a of an understanding that my thoughts produces my words and my words produces my actions and my actions produces my habits and my habits produces my character, the person I am now and the person I'm becoming in the future. So it's important for me to guard my thoughts. Somebody say, guard your heart. That's what, part, that's what uh, Solomon says, that we should guard our hearts with due diligence because out of it flows the issues of life. There's things I see in front of me. You ever, you ever said something that, that got you in trouble? You ever said something you saw and you, and you were scared of what you saw? Oh, you said, boy, I should have never said that because if I didn't say that, these actions never would have came if I never would have said what I said. I would, you ever had this expression? I wish I never said that. I'm by myself. I'm by myself. See, that's why God allow us. That's why God permits us to come before him in, in, in prayer because prayer positions my thoughts. 
Prayer helps me say the right thing. Prayer helps me to do the right thing. That's why God, God says, Anthony, I need you to acknowledge me in all of your ways. Not some of them. Because he says all because he knows he can't trust me to do everything by myself. <laughs> Y'all better help me today. He, he, can't, he can't trust Anthony to make every decision on his own. He can't, he can't trust Anthony to, to say the right thing all the time. Anybody like me don't say the right thing all the time. I wish I could say the right thing all the time. Matter of fact, I wish I could do the right thing all the time. Last night I had a good example of that. I was on my way home and I found myself, well, how in the world did I get here? I'm driving my own car, looking at my own lenses and I'm lost. <laughs> Going in the same direction I go in all the time and I'm looking up. I said, how did I get here? I'm about to go in a circle. I'm about to go back where I started. You ever been like that? That's called mind tired. <laughs> Your mind ever been so tired you, you couldn't think right. Anybody like me? See, that means you need the R-E-S-T. And that's what the Lord tells us. He said, rest. Enter. Somebody say, enter into my rest. See, when we came to church today, we walked through those doors. We entered into the courts of the Lord. We entered into the house of the Lord. We entered into a place where God said, rest in me. Leave all of your burdens outside. Leave all of your stuff outside. Leave all of what you brought in out there. Because when you come in here, I want you to take on a new zone. Somebody said a new zone. Somebody said prayer zone. Praise zone. Worship zone. In God's presence zone. That's where, that's where peace is. That's where, that's where prosperity is. That's, that's where everything fair and well for the rest of my life is. It's in the presence of of the Lord and that's why the scripture says in the presence of the Lord there is the fullness somebody say fullness of joy see I can go to the club and get a little bit of joy <laughs> I, I, I can I can get in the group of certain people and get a little bit of joy but God says in his presence is the full see I'm looking for the fullness somebody say I'm looking for the fullness you ain't gonna find the fullness of joy in nobody Somebody said nobody, but you will find the fullness of joy in the presence of the Lord. That's why he says, somebody said, let us pray, let us pray, let us pray. I almost, I almost sung a song then, but I had to pull myself back, y'all. I had to pull myself. But, but it's important that we understand, let us go into the presence of God. That's what prayer is. Prayer is going into the presence of God. Now, Luke chapter 11 says something in, in verse 1. I want to read it for your hearing. It says, and he was praying in a certain place. He was praying in a certain place. That, that was the, uh, the body of Jesus. That was uh, the Godhead uh, bodily in Jesus in a certain pr place in prayer. If Jesus had to pray, hmm, oh, what about me? I said, if Jesus had to pray, oh, what about me? And, and watch this. And he says he, he was praying in a certain place, Jesus was. He was in a certain place, just like me. I have to have a certain place in my in my house to pray. I just can't pray anywhere. I just can't pray anywhere. Anywhere is not conducive to me talking to God. I have to get in a place where it's just me and him. Somebody say me and him. It's an isolated place. It's an intimate time uh, between him and I. And I don't need no interruptions. I don't need to be sitting in front of my TV trying to talk to God, watching the Queen of the South. Y'all help me today. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't need to be trying to talk to God while watching Snowfall. I, I just need, I need to, my intimate time and watching this. Somebody say the girls. I just need to be sitting, just me and God by ourselves. We just talking. We just having a dialogue because sometimes we need to understand that we need to have more than just a monologue just me gabbing them just going before God just running my mouth I'm just going on and on and on and on I don't give God no space to say nothing have you ever been in a conversation with somebody and they don't give you time to say nothing I mean it is going on and on and on and on the only way you get a word and you got to walk away and the same thing with God God said I, I'm trying to talk to you and you ain't listening I'm trying I'm trying to give you directions but you you're not listening and the same thing with, with that, that GPS system the GPS sometimes be trying to give us direction and we pretend that they just shut up we pretend we be trying to turn it we want to turn it down how are you gonna get to where you're going and you won't let the thing talk <laughs> same thing with asking somebody a question you ask them a question and you got the answer what would you ask me for 
Well, y'all want my input? Well, shut up and listen, please. That's what God says, Anthony. Shut, just shut up. That's all I need you to do is just be quiet. Because even Jesus himself stored away in a certain place to talk to God. And watch this. And he said, Jesus said this, when he ceased, when Jesus stopped from praying, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, somebody said, Lord, teach us to pray uh, as John uh, taught his disciples to pray. And this is the thing that gets my attention here because uh, Jesus disciples noticed that Jesus was coming out of prayer. And then they remembered that uh, John taught his disciples to pray. And John disciples obviously was doing some things uh, and they saw the results of their doing things in their prayer life. See, it's really something when we see somebody who pray and we see the results of their prayer life, I think it should evoke me to pray. <laughs> because God don't have no respect to person. He really don't. You know, I, I learned early in my Christendom that God don't have no respect to persons. And I said, Lord, uh, I, I know my gifts. I'm, 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 I'm kind of feeling things around. I'm learning, uh, you know, the directions you want me to go in. I, I'm kind of feeling myself around and finding out my purpose for life and my purpose in ministry. I'm finding out what you want me to be doing so I won't be duplicating other people. So, so I won't be uh, uh, doing doing what other people are doing i'll be doing what you called me to do somebody said call to do with me what you called me to do because <laughs> I, I, I i i you see let me tell you something watch this watch this it's called kindred spirit you've been around somebody you said boy that's just they're just like me <laughs> they, they talk like me they act like me see that's called familiar spirits somebody said familiar spirit uh kindred spirit too familiar spirit too see uh, in the in the spiritual is kindred but in the in the natural is familiar and it's also a spiritual thing called familiar spirit you've been around somebody and they just and they pull something out of you you <laughs> That's, a, that's called familiar spirit. See, everybody don't pull the good out of you. Y'all better walk with me today. There's some people pull some nasty stuff out of you, some bad stuff out of you. So, so, so then you have to learn, say, I, ain't got, I, I, I don't have time for them. I got, I got to, I, so you have to teach yourself a lesson. Say, I, don't, I, don't, I, couldn't, I can't, shouldn't be around people like that because they don't pull the good out of me. See, I, I like to be around familiar spirits that pull the good out of me. I don't like to be around the ones that pull the bad out of me because I need to escape that. I'm trying to get away from him. Somebody said, I'm trying to get away from him. I ain't trying to see him every day. When I look in the mirror, I want to see a new me. Like the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation, a new creature, a new species, old things. Somebody said, oh, old things. Are past. Do you ever throw away old clothes? Why do you throw them away? Because you don't want to wear them no more. <laughs> same, same thing with personalities. <laughs> Y'all help me today. Same thing with characteristics. I, I throw them away because I don't want to see them no more. There's some parts of me I don't ever, 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 ever want to see again in this lifetime. Somebody said, me either. And that's why he said, let us pray. Jesus went to the Lord in prayer. Now watch this. Now, Jesus went to the Lord in prayer. Watch this. Not because he didn't know what to do. Because as the son of God, he knew what to do. But as the son of man, he did not know what to do. He, he did not. Jesus did not dictate his actions as the son of man. He only dictated his actions as the son of God. So he had to have a communication line with God so he can stay straight in the natural. Why? Because he never lived in the natural body before. Have you ever? Me either. <laughs> See, we got to have God's help. We got to have God's instructions. We got to have God's uh, uh, a communication system, and it's called prayer. Somebody said prayer. Uh, we call it computer and cell phone and and um, <laughs> y'all help me iPads and stuff like that. That's what we call it. But the Lord called it prayer. I said if you want to talk to me, you can't come to me with your iPad. <laughs> you can't come to me with your iPhone or your Android. You got to come to me in prayer. You got to have a direct line. Your direct line with God is Jesus. Jesus have opened up the door. Watch this. Not only have He opened up the door, but the Bible says that Jesus forever intercedes seed for us before God. He's ever talking to God. He's ever standing between me and you and God because he's the only one who can. He's the only one who can advocate for you. He's the only one who can advocate for me. He's the only one who can go to God and say, God, you know, you know what? I, I know what was on his mind at that time. I knew he was he was real heavy. He couldn't he, he, he could he couldn't help himself. So uh, on my behalf, 
let him let him go <laughs> on, on my behalf <laughs> on my behalf have mercy on him on, on my behalf forgive him let him let him slide y'all ever heard the word let him slide <laughs> let him slide let him let him slide this time just let him let him go this time but but watch this he said but when you pray and he said to them when you pray when you talk to to, to the father he says say father somebody say father that should be our approach to God. If you're a believer, if you're a Christian, your approach to God should be father. Nobody should go to their parents. Nobody should go to their parents and call them by their name. You don't go before God and call him by his name. It's a respect. It's an honor. Father. He said, when you pray, pray our father. Uh, he, he's the believer's uh, daddy. He's, he's the believer Abba. Our, he's the believer God. And he says, say, hallow it be thy name. Holy. Somebody say holy. Holy be thy name. So I, ca I can't approach him uh, with sin. I, ca I can't approach him any kind of way. I can't approach him with a, with a mindset that I'm going I'm to do it again. Y'all better help me today. Uh, I can't approach him with the mindset that, that this I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. This is my thing. I do what I want to do. It's the same thing with a parent. A parent expects a child to follow their instructions. That's all God is asking us to do when we go before him. He's, he's only asking us, just do what I'm going to instruct you to do. Just do what I'm going to ask you to do. And, and respect the fact that I'm a holy God. I'm, I'm, uh, I don't have no sin in my life. I'm a righteous God. And I'm permitting that to you. Thy, thy kingdom come. Somebody said thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. In other words, y'all remember the illustration of the vault. <laughs> Thy kingdom come. I'm, I'm, I'm not expecting you when you talk to me to think I'm way off in the blue yonder. <laughs> um, I'm expecting you that when you talk to me that you know I'm, I'm near you. <laughs> that, that, that my kingdom is right there with you. You don't have to talk to me as if what I'm going to do for you got to come from a long distance and you just got to sit there and wait till it arrive. <laughs> you, it, it's not like that. The kingdom of heaven, somebody said, is at hand. <laughs> it's in arm's reach. <laughs> I, can, I can touch the kingdom. I'm, I'm in touch with the kingdom all around me and all inside of me. I, that's why God says I'm authorizing you to do what I do up here down here he said whatever you bind on earth would be bound oh y'all better help me today and whatever you loose on earth would have been loose in heaven it has already been permitted it has already been done god says nothing is holding you up but you uh, you're the only reason why you ain't got it because you ain't saying nothing uh, you're walking around with your hand over your mouth god says open your mouth and say something and watch this now watch this here's here's another uh example of thy kingdom come he says and watch this give us each day our daily bread it ain't coming from Publix. <laughs> It's not coming from Walmart. <laughs> ah, it's coming from the kingdom. Somebody said from the kingdom. See, when God gave them manna, manna didn't come from the earth. It came from heaven. He, he sent the manna to them in the wilderness. He sent the manna from heaven. He sent the manna from heaven. He sent the manna because, watch this, when God gives you something fresh, it's not good for the next day. Oh, y'all better help me. <laughs> I said, when God give you something fresh, it's not good for the next day. And what he told them in the wilderness with the manna, he says, fresh for you today. No leftovers for tomorrow. <laughs> uh, God don't give us leftovers, y'all. He give us fresh stuff. Every day, somebody said daily bread. Mm, not Marita. <laughs> Uh, daily bread, not not wonder bread. <laughs> Somebody said, but but daily bread, not some bean bread, but daily bread. I'm so glad that God gives me something fresh daily. Somebody said daily. Oh, the old is gone. But the new has come. Somebody said that's why he tells us to forget those things which are behind because he, that's old stuff. Somebody said that's old stuff. That's stale bread. I, anybody, I don't even like stale bread. If I bite the bread and it's crunchy, I'm throwing it away because I know I didn't put it in the toaster. Y'all help me today. Uh, and if it smells, I know I'm throwing it away. It, it, I may not be able to see that mold, but it's a mold on there somewhere. Some, and the same thing with our life. I don't want this same old life every day. I need God to give me some daily bread. Daily bread. 
also be a new me every day. <laughs> oh, I smell my, I smell fresh. <laughs> so I'm going to smell yourself. I, I smell fresh. So whenever you go in the presence of God, you got to smell fresh. There ain't nothing going to be stale on you. You ain't got to worry about it. no staleness on you because God's going to make you fresh for the day. And he said, watch this, and forgive us. Mm. <laughs> and forgive us of our sins. Now, don't you be acting like you ain't messed up. Now, don't be trying to act like you all that holy and all that. See, that's that. See, you you know a person when they think they all that, they be pointing their fingers. They're always talking about what somebody else ain't up to. What what the paw they ain't up to paw. They uh, they ain't they ain't holy child. I'm, I heard them. What you doing listening? That called nosy spirit, isn't it? <laughs> nosy. And then you went and repeated, now you're gossiping. <laughs> oh, you done messed up twice. And you're talking about you all, you all that in the bag of chips. And no, you ain't. <laughs> Somebody say, and forgive us of our sins. He said, when you pray, when you come to me, I that's oh boy. He said, let us pray. When he's saying, let us pray, he's simply saying, I need you to repeat these words to me. Isn't that what they do when you go to court? They say, lift, lift the right hand and repeat these words. Y'all better help me today. And then we stand right there and do it, too. Yes, we do. Don't be, yeah, I bet you, you, you do do it. You better do that. He's going to have that bailer to come get you. <laughs> and the same thing with God. God is saying, my angels would not bring your words to me if you don't repeat what I tell you to say. <laughs> Just say what I tell you to say. Pray. When you pray, pray our Father. Now, we, now help me, y'all. We done learned so many uh, invaluable ways to talk to God until that's why we ain't getting nothing. <laughs> Y'all better help me. <laughs> you wonder why your prayer ain't being answered because somebody taught you the wrong way to pray. You got seven steps to pray. Ten steps to pray. Ninety-nine ways to pray. Y'all better help me today. Jesus told them, he said, when you pray, pray our Father who art in heaven. Hollywood be thy name. You ain't got to understand it. Just say it. Somebody said, just say it. You don't need no interpreter. Just say it. God know what you're saying. That's what's important. God is my interpreter. Yeah. Oh, I'm about to preach up in here. He said, and, and forgive us of our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone. Ooh. Forgive everyone who is indebted to us, do we? Ask myself that question. <laughs> do I? Do I forgive somebody else who sinned against me when I got when I'm bold enough to go before God and ask God to forgive me? When I mess up on God, I ask God to forgive me. When somebody else mess up on me, I hold them, I hold them hostage. I put I put that yoke on their neck. And watch what Jesus, Jesus said. Now watch this. He said, Now I'm gonna speak a parable to you. Ooh, I'm about to preach y'all. Y'all better get make me get a hold of myself because I'm about to preach already. But I'm, I'm, but see, good teaching is good for us. Watch this because it's good reaching. Jesus talking to his disciples and he's telling them, when you pray, pray like this. This is how you ought to pray. You ought to pray like this because I want you to understand you're going to mess up too. As perfect as I have caused your life to be, <laughs> as, as perfect as I have designed your life to be, you go mess up. You you gonna make a mistake if you don't believe me? Ask Peter. Peter Peter went to the Lord. Say, Lord, how many times should I uh, forgive my brother? He said, brother, didn't he? He didn't say he didn't say no stranger. He said, my brother. These boys just walking along with me because somebody must have offended Peter for Peter to go to Jesus and ask that question. He said, if, if he offend me, how many times a day should I forgive him? And, and, and watch this. And here's Peter being suggestive until seventy times seven. <laughs> The Lord said, oh, no, Peter, you ain't going to get off. You ain't getting off that easy. I need you to forgive him as often times as they come to you. Because he, he gave him such a large number. In other words, Peter, you, ain't, you can't even count that long. <laughs> you can't even count that long. So you might as well just go on and forgive him the first time. It's going to let him off the first time. Because watch this. I'm going to show you something. Because as long as I hold them hostage to that, I'm carrying it around with me. They way over there, and I'm taking it with me. 
I done left them way in California, and I'm in Jacksonville still pondering with that thing. I'm still wrestling with that thing. I'm still bringing that thing back. I'm still regurgitating. I'm still coughing it up. I'm still throwing it up. I'm still vomiting that same thing. And when I look down there, it's the same mess. Oh, no, I got to get this out of me. Oh, no. Oh, let me. I can't get them on the phone, but I'm going to put it in the atmosphere. I forgive you. Put it in the atmosphere. Because our words are powerful. Now, if our words wasn't powerful, then I want to ask you a question. Why was Jesus praying? That sets the tone. That sets the standard right there. That's a high standard to follow. If Jesus had to put words in the atmosphere to the Father, then how much valuable would it be if I did the same? And then he goes further and when Jesus tells them, Jesus just coming out of prayer. And I believe this. I do believe this. I believe this with all of my heart. That Jesus, not only was he teaching them to pray like John's disciples was praying, he was also teaching them how to pray like he just prayed. And we call it, watch this, the model prayer. Are y'all walking with pastor today? The model prayer. So that means we should be modeling what Jesus did. We should be saying our father. We shouldn't be going up to God uh, uh, saying <clears throat> our most prestigious father who set the galacticals in the atmosphere and who have called the Orions of the universe. We shouldn't go to God like that. Like, 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 I mean, like I'm trying to show God how smart I am. God know how um, dumb I am. <laughs> When I'm, <laughs> he know how dumb I am to even come before him like that. To even approach God with such profound words as if that's going to turn God on. I mean, that might work with a girl or a boy, but that, <laughs> but that ain't gonna work with God. Somebody say, that ain't gonna work with God. God don't care nothing about that. Matter of fact, God will do just like this. He will put his fingers in his ears because he don't want to hear that. God wants sincerity of the heart. <laughs> Even parents know when you don't mean it. Y'all help me today. So if so if so if we discerning enough to know when a person don't mean something, you think God let that get by him? Mm -mm, I'll tell you nay. And then he says, "Lead us not into temptation." Now, if you're being tempted to do something, God ain't lead you there. Somebody say, "Run." You ever watch that video? Say, "Run." <laughs> uh, <laughs> when temptation comes, uh, turn right. Somebody said, turn right, <laughs> turn in the right direction, turn to God. When temptation comes, turn to God, because he said, when a man is tempted, he's tempted by his own desires. Yeah, somebody said, I didn't know that was in me. <laughs> you found out the day uh, you found out you like apples more than you thought you did. <laughs> you better get away from that apple. You better run. Somebody said, run. Now, now watch this. Watch this. Prayer is not a convenience, but a necessity. Somebody said necessity. Prayer is a necessity. That's why Jesus said in Luke chapter 11, and then here comes Matthew in Matthew chapter 6 in the Revised Standard Version. Here he says, give us this day our daily bread. Somebody says it's a necessity. Prayer is a necessity. I got to pray. Somebody says, I got to pray. I got to pray. I got to pray. As a matter of fact, when I leave here today, I'm going to be riding in my car, and I'm going to be saying, our Father who art in heaven. I'm going to be, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to be praying. Yes, I am. See, I wake up in the morning and I do, I do, I do. I wake up in the morning and I say, I, I got to pray today. I need to pray. Before I walk out that door, I need to pray. Before I get engaged with anything else, I need to pray. Before I pick up the phone, I need to pray. Uh, before I brush my teeth, I need to pray. You know, sometimes I be thinking I'm going to have bad breath when I talk to God. But I, ain't, I ain't got time to brush my teeth today, God. We just going to have to talk with bad breath because I got to talk to you. I, I got something I need to, need to say to you. Somebody say, it's me again, Lord, with a prayer that needs an answer. It's me again, Lord, with a, with a, with a problem I cannot solve. But, but, but Lord, I need you to take care of this matter. I, this, is, this is a job for super God. Oh, y'all help me today. Y'all know when they call Superman, they put, that, they put that thing up, that light up in the air for Batman. And that's a job for Batman. Y'all say he got to go to Gotham City. Y'all help me today. See, we got to call on God. See, when you call Superman, you got to understand 
and all they got to do is pull out some kryptonite and Superman is in trouble. But one thing I understand, you can pull out whatever you want to. When I call on the name of the Lord, kryptonite and nothing else can stop him. Y'all help me. The devil and all his angels cannot stop God. All the demons in hell cannot stop God. Y'all better help me. They might try to interfere. They might try to uh, interrupt. They might try to stop my prayers. They, but come, thanks be to God. Can nobody on earth stop God from answering my prayer? Y'all help me today. I don't care what you say about me. God and I have a one line. It's us talking together on a daily basis. Are y'all writing this down? Because I'm going somewhere. Really, I'm going somewhere. Prayer is God's way of us. Watch this. Prayer is God's way for us to reach him, not his way to reach us. <laughs> oh, Matthew 6 and 10 says this, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Y'all help me today. <laughs> See, we be thinking, we, we, you know, I'm, I, I feel some special way. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a king's kid and I can go before God anytime I want to. <laughs> but let me tell you something, God don't need to talk to you. He needs you to talk to him. <laughs> Y'all help me. God ain't having no communication problem. I'm having the communication problem. I'm the one need to talk to God. God ain't got no problems. He, I said none. God ain't. Can I say it like this? Now, God ain't got now problem. God ain't got nay re problem. God ain't got no problem. I'm the one got the problem. I need to go to God. As a matter of fact, I don't have. I don't even have a problem. I'm going to God, so I won't. Oh, y'all help me. See, we, we think uh, we got to go to God when everything's going wrong. You need to go to God when everything's going right. You, matter of fact, you need to talk to God on a daily basis. Somebody said, let us pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. And prayer is a privilege, not an option. I said prayer is a privilege and not an option. James chapter 5 and 16 says, it says, therefore, confess your sins one to another and pray one for another. Now, he didn't say for you to go to somebody and tell them your business and then they go out and speak spread your business. He didn't say that. He said, uh, let us confess our sins one for another and pray one for another. In other words, if I'm telling you something, I'm telling you to pray for me. Y'all better help me today. And if I'm telling you something, I'm telling you I got a problem and I need you to pray for me. I'm not telling you I got a problem. I need you to go tell everybody. And now we got a real problem. The problem snowball. The problem got real big. Now the problem turned from me confessing my faults to you to you confessing my faults to other people. Y'all better help me today. I ain't mean for you to confess my faults to somebody else. I didn't tell you that so you can go and tell everybody Everybody else, I ain't tell you that so you go stand before the church and I got a testimony service and you testifying about me. <laughs> Y'all better help me. Today. I remember one day I went to somebody's church, I ain't gonna call their name. I went to their church, I'm sitting out in the audience and, and they were so glad to see me until they start reminiscing. They start talking about you. Oh, I'm gonna testify today and I'm gonna testify. You know, yeah, that's my boy right there. And they start testifying about me. I say, Hold up, hold up. I don't need you to testify about me. I'm of age, I can talk for myself. Give me the microphone. Let me set this place off. I know what to tell them. You don't know what to tell them. You're going to tell them that. I'm going to tell them this, that and another. Y'all better help me. I'm not going to test tell on you. I'm going to tell on me. You telling on me. You ain't told them nothing about you. Y'all help me somebody. Testimony service ain't for me to throw off on nobody. Testimony service for me to tell people about how the glory of God in my life. Oh Lord, help me today. Mm. Prayer is a privilege and not an option. And here we go. James chapter 5, 16. It says, therefore, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. That you, that watch this, that you may be healed. That's the whole purpose of it. The whole purpose for me to confess my sins to you is so that I can be healed. So you can pray for me and I'll be healed. Help me today, y'all. I'm about to set this place off. I need to be healed. Somebody say, I need to be healed. I'm coming to you because I need God to heal me. And I need him to intervene to you. I need you to talk to God on my behalf because I, I, I feel so bad about this thing until I don't feel like I can move any further. I don't feel like I can go on. I don't feel like I can go back. I don't feel like I can get my old lifestyle back again. I don't feel like I can get my groove back. But I'm saying to you, I need you to pray for me. I need you to pray for me so that I may be healed. Watch this. And then the prayer of right the righteous man 
uh, has great power in its effects. <laughs> oh, that's why God wants us to talk to him because we have great power in our prayer. Somebody say, I got power in my prayer. <laughs> I'm just like Elijah. <laughs> oh, I feel like preaching. <laughs> I feel like Elijah. Elijah said, Lord, I don't want it to rain for three and a half years. He didn't even spell it out like that. He just said, Lord, don't, I don't want it to rain no more. <laughs> These people have made me so mad. <laughs> don't let nothing grow. <laughs> he said, These people have pissed me off. <laughs> I don't want no rain to fall nowhere. Y'all better help me. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is just my vernacular to you today because you can understand when I say piss me off. <laughs> and if I said that back there when Elijah was around, they wouldn't have understood what I was saying. But I know y'all understand what I'm saying. <laughs> don't act like you don't understand the words that are coming out of my mouth. <laughs> he said, now, Elijah said, Now, love, no, don't you let it rain. Don't you let it rain. Not, not nary drip or drop. <laughs> I don't want to even see no moss on the ground. <laughs> don't even let mist fall on the ground. I want it to be so dry that their mouth be dry. <laughs> and their mouth be so dry they be one say, Lord, give me some water. <laughs> he said, Lord, wet my mouth. <laughs> I need some water in my mouth. <laughs> I need my mouth to get wet. It's too dry. Anybody heard of dry mouth? <laughs> see, that's, that's, that's what Elijah was praying. And then Elijah prayed again and the Bible said, and it rained. <laughs> I'm so bad. That I can make it not rain and make it rain. <laughs> you a bad girl. You a bad boy. <laughs> you all hunch hunched them and said, girl, you better than you think you are. Because I remember when I was a pastor in Columbus, Georgia, we was having an outdoor activity. We were, yes, we were. <laughs> and see, I remember my, my late bishop, <laughs> we was having a, a, a fun day out on the grounds and it, I mean it was raining it was a nasty mess we had all the tents set up and we had invited all the community to come out and eat and come on and have a good fish fry have a good barbecue have, play basketball play volleyball play kickball we gonna have fun this gonna be a fun day and it rained I'd say it rained that man of God we got together and we prayed and I'm telling you God dried up the mud y'all better help me today the mud was so dry it turned into sand the sun came out and, and melted all of this, the, the water that was on the ground. If you, I tell you, it was just like it never rained that day. God did something special for the Philippian community church. The sun was shining on that side of Jacksonville. Why? Because the man of God prayer had great effect. Y'all better walk with me. And I remember when I was in Columbus, Georgia, and I remembered that prayer. Oh, good God Almighty. I remember that prayer. We was having an outdoor fest. We were having an outdoor activity. We had people all over the world. They was coming from everywhere, I promise you. And they was out there and they was ready. And they was and they looked and they said, Oh, Pastor, look at that cloud coming. And they said, oh, it's a tornado coming. And it was coming fast. I, yeah, yeah, it was coming. See, we was down in the in the valley. And that's how the, the wind scoops it goes from the valley and it goes up. But good God Almighty, I walked out that door and I pointed at that storm and I said, Storm, I command you in the name of Jesus that you back up. And then watch this. I'm telling you, it was raining right here. It was a storm right here. We standing on this side. The storm was on that side. And I said, I command you to back up. And the storm just shoot. Good God Almighty. Everybody was standing there and said, wow. Uh, see, it wasn't, it wasn't for me. God did it for all of us. Because he wanted them to know if something like this happened in your life, you got the same power. You got the same authority. Y'all better walk with me. I told y'all today was Miracle Sunday. Oh, good God Almighty. I remember a, a, a young lady that was attending a Philippian community church. And I remember all these testimonies because they're good for you. God said, and we overcome him by the words of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, I feel like preaching. And she came outside her, her Volkswagen and locked her keys in the car. Didn't have no master key. Y'all better help me. Didn't have no lock, uh, unlock key service to call because we had just got out of service. We was having a wonderful time. And I walked outside and I saw them trying to get in that car. And I remembered my friend. My friend said his daddy was a bishop and he took his keys and held them up before God. He said, God, open up this key. Use this key to open up this door. I know this is not the key to go to this car but God you can do anything. He took that key and unlocked that door. I was driving a Ford Granada. Y'all know Ford Granada keys are not even shaped like a Volkswagen key. Y'all help pass it day. Matter of fact she has some stuff in her car I ain't have in mine. I just feel good about that. But let me tell you something. And I walked out that door and I saw them and they was trying to get in that car they couldn't get in. I said Lord take these uh, 
these uh, Granada Ford, Granada Keys, and opened up this door. I screamed hard. I, everybody was outside. People was all over the, uh, even Quran, all of them. Sister Blackwell, all of them. I took them keys and held them up before God. And I said, Lord, take these Ford Granada Keys and unlock this door. And I stuck that key in that door, and they saw that lock pop. Somebody said, Papa Lock. God is a Papa Lock. That key, that, that lock popped up. Everybody scream and start running around that parking lot. Some of them was running because they was doubting how in the world did that happen. But we serve a mighty God. Somebody say a mighty God. There is nothing too hard for God. I don't care what it is. There ain't nothing too hard for God. You got a toothache. God can stop your teeth from hurting right now. I remember working in the prayer tower. This lady came in the prayer tower. Her, her jaws was like this. Oh, she had an abscess. Oh, she, her, her teeth was killing her. Oh, y'all better help me. She was crying. She was a grown woman. Yes, 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 yes. A toothache would make you cry. I'm a grown man. I'm sharing some tears with a toothache. But I'm telling you right now, that woman was crying and she was going through oh, oh, severe pain. And I said, woman, do you believe God? She said, yeah, I believe God. I said, do you really have faith that God would heal your mouth right now? Let me tell you something. I don't mean heal your mouth. I'm telling you, God would do dentistry in your mouth. Ooh, God would do dentistry in your mouth right now. She said, yeah, I believe it. I said, well, lift your hand before God right now. She lifted her hands. I said, and be healed in the name of Jesus. The jaw went, the jaw went down to normal. She said, what has just happened here? She, whoa, she, her eyes bolted out. She said, oh, look at God. She said, not only did the pain go, but the jaw done gone down. And now watch this. And God done fixed the teeth. She didn't have to go to the dentist because God did all she needed to be done right there in that prayer tower. I told you today is Miracle Sunday. And I'm working in the prayer tower. This lady was, they were pushing her in the wheelchair. And they knew who to bring her to because I believe God for anything. God then told me one day, he said, son, I'm going to use you to do creative surgery. And I just believe him just like that. They was pushing that woman in that wheelchair. They said, she can't walk up the walk of faith. I said, that's the walk of faith. Let me tell you something. I need you to do something, mama. I know you can't walk up there. I know you're stuck in that wheelchair, but I need you to do something. I need you to take the walk of faith. Y'all help pastor today. I said, this is how I want you to take that walk of faith. As they push you around, I need you to say, God, before I get to that door, I'm going to be walking. Lord, have mercy. That mother in that wheelchair, she was saying, Lord, before I get to the top, I'm going to be walking. And they was pushing mama. And before they knew it, mama they jumped up out of that wheelchair and started running on around that faith to walk, that walk of faith. She ran in that door. I'm telling y'all the truth. She ran up in that door. And, you know, we got the sparrow uh, staircase right there. She ran upstairs in the walk of faith. And she came back down the sparrow case because that's where I was. She said, man of God, I'm that woman that they was pushing in that wheelchair. I come to tell you today, somebody said, let us pray because when you talk to God, things begin to happen. God do creative things. God do things man cannot do. God do things that you need right now. Somebody said, Lord, I need you like smoking oil. Food. I need you now. Somebody said, I need you now, Lord. I need you to do something for me right now. I need it. I don't need it tomorrow. I need it right now. The woman had this blood. She needed God help when right now she didn't need to wait she done waited 12 years somebody said I had this thing too long it's time for this thing to go somebody said right now God oh right now right now right now I told you today is miracle Sunday somebody said I got to get mad I don't know about you but I got to get mad I might be sitting by the wrong person they got room over there I might need to move what in the faith zone somebody said I got to get it I don't need nobody to get in my way the importance of prayer uh, I'm about to quit y'all I'm about to quit I'm going to shut this thing down but I'm going somewhere that prayer is important you got to value prayer you got to understand that prayer is the most important thing in your life uh, let us pray somebody said let us pray Jesus told them he said in Matt, uh, Luke chapter 18 y'all walk with me well, Luke chapter 18 verse 1 he, and he told them a parable Jesus told them an illustration. Jesus gave them something to reference to. He said to the effect that they ought to always 
pray. Oh, tell that neighbor, say, I don't know about you, but I'm going to start praying 24-7. I'm going to start praying all the time. Let me tell you, there was a man who wrote two-thirds of the Bible, of the New Testament, by the name of Paul. Paul wrote the New Testament by two-thirds of the New Testament. Paul was a man, his name was changed from Saul to Paul. Why was his name changed from Saul to Paul? Because Saul used to kill Christians. Saul used to beat women up and batter them and throw them in the prison. You say you're a Christian, he would walk up to you say are you a Christian or do you believe in Jesus Christ and he didn't say Christian he didn't use the word Christian he said are you do you a believer of Jesus Christ do you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God they say yes he batters them right then and there some of them he'll chop their head off some of them he'll thrust a sword in them some of them he'll kill them right on the spot and then some of them he'll drag them by their hair and pull them and pull them in prison never y'all better help me today but let me tell you something I remember this young girl in, in, in the Colum Columbine in that shooting they were shooting everybody in the class room that young man was killing everybody and he walked over to her he said are you a Christian she said yes I am oh y'all help me today she said yes I am he said why are you saying you're a Christian you know I'm gonna kill you he said because the only thing is separating from me from God is that bullet that you get ready to put into me the only thing separating me from going to heaven is that bullet you threatened me with I, I'm telling you today you ain't scaring me all you're doing is putting confidence in me because I know where I'm going when I leave here because to be absent from the body is to be presence with the Lord. Tell that neighbor, say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but the only thing that's stopping me from getting to heaven is that thing called death. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you better preach, preacher. I feel like preaching. I'm going somewhere with this. Jesus telling his boys, he said, boys, you ought to always pray. And let me tell you why he told them that. He said, I'm telling you that because if you pray all the time, you won't be fainting. You won't get weak. You won't get weak if you pray. If you pray all the time, prayer is your strength. Prayer to a believer. It's like spinach to uh, Popeyes. Y'all better help me. Prayer. prayer. Somebody said prayer is that the, the champion of the believer. If you want to be a champion, you better pray. You want to be a believer and be a warrior. Somebody say, I want to be a warrior. It's the breakfast of a champion. All you got to do is pray. All you got to do is wake up in the morning and pray. Wake up in the middle of the night and pray. Wake up at midnight and pray. Sometimes you have problems sleeping. You ought to pray. I heard somebody saying it's the truth. You having the problem going to sleep? Read your Bible. One thing the devil won't let let you do. He ain't gonna let you read through your Bible all night. I promise you that. Because your Bible is your defense against the devil. You get some words in you and you start exclaiming them in the atmosphere. Demons start going crazy. Demons start putting their hands over their ears because they say, oh, 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 oh. And I woke up another believer. I better put them to sleep. I better put some sleepies on them. Y'all better help me. That's why you y'all know what I'm talking about. You know you slept for nine hours. Y'all better help me. As soon as you get to church, you get sleepy. You know that's the devil. I, I missed the truth. I remember when the church started back in the in the olden days. I ain't old, y'all, but you know back in the day when I, we used to have church in Pastor Callahan's uh, in his den, we would be sitting. I'd be, I mean, I mean, I, I'd be rested. I, oh, I mean, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get the word. I'm ready to get some word. I'm ready to get before God. As soon as I sit down, oh, you're a lying wonder. I learned that was the devil. The Pastor Callahan said, that's the devil putting y'all to sleep. Soon as y'all get to church, you start yawning. Soon as you get to church, you start going to sleep. And I start getting on the edge of my seat. Y'all better help me today. I'm letting the devil know I mean business. I said, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I ain't going to sleep today. We gonna walk today. It's gonna be a fight up in here. People gonna look up there in the pulpit. They gonna wonder what I'm punching at. I'm punching at the devil. I'm gonna knock the devil out today. He ain't gonna put me to sleep. Somebody say, not the day, devil. Not the day, not the day. I'm not going to sleep. I'm gonna put the word on the devil. The Bible says in Jeremiah 33 and 3, it says, call unto me. He says, somebody said, let us pray. It's time to pray. Call unto me and I will answer thee. That's why God wants us to talk to him. That's what God tells me. He beckons me to talk to him because he
He wants to do something in me. He wants to do something in you. Somebody say, call him. Call him up and tell him what you want. Call him. He says, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I'm coming to tell you today. There's some hidden things that man can't not see. There's some hidden things that has not been disclosed to humanity. But God is calling you to come before him in prayer. He said, not only am I going to answer you, I'm going to show you some great and hidden things. I'm going to show you some mysteries. I don't know about you, but I like mystical stuff. I like stuff everybody don't know. Y'all better help me today. Um, I'm just that funny kind of guy. Uh, but God is saying to us, I need you to talk to me because there are benefits in you talking to me. There are benefits to the believer when we communicate with God. I feel like preaching up in here. I got one more verse and we going home. Y'all better help pastor today. I said I got one more verse and we gonna bring this thing down. But this thing is in my spirit. I heard the Holy Ghost. He said you must tell them this because there are benefits in prayer. When you talk to God, things began to shift around. When you talk to God, things began to happen. I need you to talk to them and tell them the day when they talk to me, go to Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse number 12. Then, somebody say then, shall you call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. Somebody say God will. Mm, he'll listen to me. Oh, I feel like leaning today. Somebody said lean on, lean on. I said I feel like leaning because that's what God does. When you talk to God, when you go to God in prayer, God says I lean. Ooh, I lean my ear. He says my ears are open to the cry of the righteous. My ears are open to the prayers of the righteous. I hear you say the Lord. I come to preach today but I got to tell you something. The Bible says well, that's what prayer does. Prayers are waiting rooms. Just like y'all in the hospital. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Somebody said prayers are waiting room. When you talk to God you in the waiting room and the Bible says they that wait. I feel like preaching. They that wait upon the Lord. They shall renew. Ooh, they shall renew their strength. I want to ask you a question. How in the world am I going to renew something that I already have? That means I'm weak right now. He says in Corinthians, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. I feel like preaching. Jesus told his disciples, he says your flesh is weak, but your spirit is willing. Somebody said my spirit is willing to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and talk to God. My spirit is willing to give up, get up at 530 and talk to God. My spirit is willing to get up at 6 o'clock and talk to God. My spirit is willing to wait at 8 o'clock at night and talk to God. My spirit is willing to get up at midnight and talk to God. But my flesh is telling me to sleep a little while longer. But my flesh is telling me to go to McDonald's and get you something to eat. Y'all better help me tonight. Ooh, my flesh want to be filled. My flesh want to be satisfied. But I'm so glad that I feed my spirit when I get in the word. Somebody say get in the word. I feed my spirit when I talk to God in prayer. Can I preach this thing the way I feel it? I'm feeling good, y'all. I feel like preaching. He said that you shall seek me. <laughs> ah, you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. God need all of my heart, not some of it. I heard Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, he told his disciples, he said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock, knock, knock and the door shall be open. What are you saying, Missy? It's an acronym. Somebody say, a 
ask s seek k knock everybody that asks shall receive everybody that seek shall find everybody that knock the door shall be open i ain't never seen nobody except a stranger knock on my door and i look out the peephole and i didn't open the door y'all better help me today if i know you if i recognize you i'll let you in because jesus said my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow y'all help pastor today we ain't always had peepholes i wish i had me somebody there was times somebody would knock at the door and you would say who is it i wish i had me somebody and they said this is carol and you recognize carol's voice and you open up the door and let her in and there are times you heard somebody knock at the door and you didn't recognize it and you wouldn't say a word i wish i had me somebody mom's the word i don't recognize them i don't know who that might be out there i ain't saying nothing i wish i had me somebody and i'm a man and i think i'm a bad boy but there's some times i didn't recognize the boys and i ain't say a word y'all better help me because you ain't gonna set me up oh you better be wise as a serpent yes you better somebody say the bible says be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove somebody say pray 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 i feel like praying right now i feel like praying i feel like saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our sins oh lord forgive me of my trespasses forgive me of my debt so i can forgive others their debts somebody help me today and lead me not into temptation but deliver me from all evil somebody help me today that's why i need to talk to god because i need a deliverance from all evil y'all better help me today because eve is lurking all around yes it is eve is lurking in the daytime evil is lurking in the nighttime somebody help me i feel like preaching up in here yes i do i'm gonna close my bible so i can shut my mouth i'm gonna close my bible so i won't see no more words because i can see words flashing all before me y'all better help me today i ain't got to have no bible i got the word trapped down on the inside ow i feel like preaching y'all better help me the bible said this young man cried and the lord helped him and out of all of his troubles i told y'all i don't need no bible the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway that word have i hid in my heart that i might not sin against thee your word it was good for me that i was afflicted so i can keep that statue oh i feel like preaching somebody said let not your heart be troubled you believe in god believe also in me in my father's house there are many mansions i told you i'm going away to prepare a place for you but where i am you gonna be there also somebody said i'm going up a yonder to be with my lord i'm going up yes i am up jacob's ladder i'm climbing a little bit higher you going with me i'm going higher i don't want to leave nobody behind you better come on and go with me somebody said let us pray i feel like talking to god yes i do i got the word in my heart the word of god somebody said i said the word of god it is it is it is he said the word it is a light somebody says it's a light it is a light i can see where i'm going i can see where i don't need to go i see that over there i ain't going over there i can see that over there that's where i need to go the bible says we have a treasure in this earth and vessels tell that neighbor said neighbor i'm finding out through prayer what's inside of me i'm finding out the value of what god got inside of me y'all gonna help me i'm about to lose my mind up in here i'm about to go somewhere i feel like preaching today i told them earlier i said i feel like preaching y'all y'all better get me i need the lord to sit on me i don't know about you but i need the lord to sit on me and sometimes i ask special people to sit in my lap y'all ain't hearing me i got a 42 year old daughter and she 
keep it still sit on my lap because that's my baby y'all better help me i got a 40 year old son and he can sit in my lap because that's my baby y'all ain't hearing pastor i got a 30 year old daughter she can sit in my lap because that's my baby i got a 32 year old she can sit in my lap because that's my baby y'all better help me and god is telling you i need you to come and sit in my lap i need you to come and confer with me i need you to come and have a talk with me I, I, I need you even though i can read your heart even though i can see the words that are coming out of your mouth before they come out before they make an exit Ooh, but i still need you to talk to me i need your precious words to come in my earlobe y'all better help me today god is calling you god is beckoning us today he says come 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 and let us pray i feel like prayer today i feel because prayer takes me prayer ushers me into the presence of god prayer 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 it ushers me right into the kingdom prayer it takes me to a valuable place prayer it takes me where god live that's where i want to go that's why i talk to god because i want to go where god is y'all better help me i'm going to cancun in september because i'm going where my daughter gonna be y'all better help me today the only reason why i'm going because my daughter gonna be there if she wasn't there i'll stay in jacksonville y'all better help me the reason why god says i want you to come to my kingdom i want you to come and talk to me because i want you to feel what the kingdom of god is like i want you to understand that when you come into my presence the world ain't in here oh i feel like preaching i need you to come into the kingdom because in the kingdom ain't no crying in here y'all better help me because i'm a lifter of your head come under me i feel like preaching oh ye, your head is down i lift you up he said in his word y'all better help me i feel like preaching up in here the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i fear the lord is the strength of my life of whom shall i be afraid y'all better help me lift up your head oh ye gates and be you lifted up you everlasting doors and let the king of glory let him come in who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty he is the king of glory somebody said i need the lord to fight my battles oh yes i do i need to fight my battles i heard something he will fight my battles yes he will i don't care what your battle is god will fight it from the least to the greatest he'll fight your battle i don't care what it is god will he'll get you a job not only will he get your job he'll make you stay your job yes he will he will advance you on your job the bible says promotion don't come from the north or the south but promotion comes from the lord he'll take down one and raise up another somebody say yes he will let me show you how he does it because i'm coming to tell you we ain't always had no cell phones we used to have rotary phones y'all better help me we used to have potty lines y'all better help pastor but now god advanced somebody he promoted somebody to come up with an idea of a cell phone y'all better help me and some of us we don't advance we don't have no flip phone i don't know about them people i don't even know why they have a flip phone that flip phone don't do nothing y'all better help me we done gone past that we we are somewhere else god done promoted somebody to come up with an idea to advance us to other things now we got a computer on my cell phone y'all better help me i wish i had me some help up in here and now i could just look at my phone and say a name and it'll call that person y'all better help me Ooh. and i heard somebody say well y'all better them cell phones just making us lazy ain't making me lazy because i can remember numbers if i want to i ain't got to remember no number i can just tell my phone call jackie and he'll call her y'all better help me today you got to understand that god done promoted somebody to be advanced so you won't be left behind i wish i had me somebody i'm so glad i can talk to my phone siri tell me where the next restaurant at y'all better help me you know you need siri to talk for you you might be locked 
locked up in somebody's trunk, tied up, and you got your phone in your pocket. You say, Siri, call 911. I wish I had me somebody. That's what prayer is. Prayer is our distress signal up to God. Prayer is my 911 up to God. I got to cry. I got to quit. I got to quit. Oh, you better stop missing. I'm stopping. I'm stopping. I promise y'all I'm going to quit. Uh, I'm going to quit. I'm one of them Cali boys. Them Cali boys long winded, y'all. I got a, I got a birth defect. Uh, I'm a Cali boy. Y'all, I'm sorry. I got a birth defect. I'm a Cali boy. That's what it is. I got some of that man DNA in me. I'm a little long winded. I can preach the Bible from Genesis to Revelation because I'm a Cali boy. Uh, that's what we was guilty by. Them Cali boys. They know that Bible. I wish I had somebody. Somebody said they went to Sunday school. Sunday school at 9.30 in the morning. They coming out of Sunday school at 11 o'clock clock y'all better help me today sunday school i'm so glad i went to sunday school i'm trying to quit y'all but the holy ghost said i got i ain't ready to stop yet somebody needs just a little bit more somebody said a little dab just won't do me uh, i think i must quit quit holy ghost we got to stop this thing we want these people to come back don't we uh, listen up y'all let us pray we need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. If there's ever been a time when we need to talk to God, that time is now. Just think, just think for a second, briefly, when the pandemic hit the world, not just America, hit China, hit the entire world, Japan, Korea. It hit everybody. Everybody got hit by that pandemic but then those of us who knew prayer those of us who knew the value of prayer we went to second chronicles 7 14 and we said lord your word says if my people have a call by my name shall seek my face and humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways i I forgive them of their sins and I heal the land. Don't y'all see it? Don't y'all see the results of prayer? Y'all know, y'all know we we all being here masked up right now. Ow! If it wasn't for prayer, if it wasn't for you praying, you praying, you praying, you praying, you praying, you praying, me praying, people online praying, we will all be masked up right now. Matter of fact, you wouldn't be sitting by that person you're sitting by right now. You'll be spread out all over the church right now. Why? Because the pandemic had us all in the uproar. Because, watch this. Because many of us understood the value of prayer. Many of us said, all I need to do is talk to God. I was one of them. I was one of them. I promise y'all, I was one of them. I, I never closed the doors of my church. Didn't. I kept the doors open of the church every day of the pandemic. Didn't shut down not one time. I refused to shut the doors. If I shut anything down, I shut my house down. But I ain't going to shut the house of God down. Because the house of God is more safer than my own house. How in the world would I say my house is safer than God's house? I'll leave my house open, but I'm going to close God's house. I couldn't do it. I couldn't. It wasn't even in me. It wasn't even in to do. But let me tell you something. Nobody in my church got the pandemic. Nobody in my church got COVID. Nobody. Anybody? Where y'all at? Nobody, nobody, nobody in here could say they had COVID, none, and came to church every service because they got wisdom. They didn't go frolicking out here in Jacksonville and other places hanging out with people. They didn't do that like people, other people did. Many people did because you don't just get uh, the pandemic by sitting in your house. Uh, they, they, there's a nurse right there. You, don't, you, don't, you ain't sitting in your house away from people and you're going to get COVID. They ain't, ain't going to have COVID. They're going to just knock on your door and say, hey, I'm out here. Can y'all come in? <laughs> it ain't gonna do that and, and watch this I'm telling you this I'm guilty of this too I am I got a witness probably in the church somewhere who can say it I'm guilty I haven't been around people who had the COVID I've been around them I ain't never had it not one time and, I, and, I, and, and the Bible says this it does it says you can drink any daily thing and it will not harm you and he said that now he didn't tell me to go looking for poison and drink it he didn't tell me that but I was around people that didn't know they had COVID I didn't know they had it just like my mother my mother in the hospital she had COVID I didn't know she had COVID 
I didn't. I was wondering why they let people in the room. They got COVID. They don't let nobody in the room. They got COVID. You even supposed to let them in the hospital. Ain't that the truth? Because that's what they were doing. They were letting you in the hospital. That somebody, your, your family member got COVID, you going to sit outside. You ain't going in that room. Nobody told me my mother had COVID. I went running, right in there taking pictures with him, my mask all down. I'm posing. <laughs> it's the truth. I got it on my phone. Didn't get not no iota of COVID-19. Why? Because the Lord reminded me. He said, son, you did that ignorantly. Had you known she had COVID, you love your mama, but you stayed on the other side of that door. And I would have. My, my mama <laughs> no, no contraction why because God honors his word what are you saying pastor I'm saying to you please if you don't hear nothing else I say today remember God values your prayer your prayer is worth something to God because when you go to him, watch this, when you go to him collective, you, collectively, oh, this thing is powerful. Jay, Jay, this is powerful. Because when I go to God, I'm going collective. I'm not going by myself. Even though it's just me and God in the room, when I go before him, watch what I say. Our Father. Mm. I'm bringing every believer in the room with me. And the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 12 to sing then that we have this great cloud of witnesses. There's a cloud of witnesses. And there's, there's, there's a host of believers in heaven that's watching over our prayers. <laughs> that's, that's even talking to God on our behalf. And then and then they, and sometimes when I'm when I'm a little aloof with my scriptures, I hear something in my ear says. Let us go boldly before the throne of God that we might receive mercy in the time of need. See, see, see the, 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 the many cloud of witnesses was, would remind you of scriptures. Isn't that wonderful? I know, I know, I know you say the Holy Ghost, yeah, the Holy Ghost, but but also the Holy Ghost ain't the only thing we have around us because we have spiritual beings around us as well. But I just want to say to you today. Let us pray. I want everybody in the room to do me a favor and stand, if you will. I want you to honor God with your standing. Just honor him today with your standing. And while you're standing, I want you to repeat after me, if you will. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen also in that prayer I want you to pray this prayer say Lord forgive me of my sins and forgive forgive me for sinning against my neighbor Lord I'm sorry for all of my sins right now I believe in my heart that Jesus died for all of my sins and the sins of the world and as I stand I ask you to come into my heart and accept me as a child so I can become a child of God I receive it by faith I now confess that I'm a believer I now confess that I'm a Christian that I'm Christ-like. From this day forward, May 1st, 2022, I receive it. And I thank you for my new birthday that I'm saved on this day. And God, as I stand, 
I thank you for this service. I thank you for this awakening of let us pray. Now I know how to pray. Now I know the value of my prayer. And I glorify you on this day. Lift that right hand all over the building. And remember, now we do have a treasure chest right here in front of the church. Amen. That's where we receive our offering. Amen. If you want to give an offering today, please do so. Amen. We, are, we are, uh, greatly appreciate your gifts that you give. But I want to say something. This is very important. When you give, when you give your gifts, when you, when you tithe and when you give offering, you're giving that to the church. That's your way of saying, I'm committed to the church with my offering and with my tithe. Also, on the flip side of that, when you say, I'm giving my tithe and my offering, you're saying to God, Lord, I'm in relationship with you. I'm giving my tithe, I'm giving my offering because I'm in relationship with you. I'm giving my tithe, I'm giving my offering because I'm committed to my local church. And right now, I want you to know every seed that you sow, you'll know that seed again. The Bible says, give and it shall be given. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. He said, I cause men, I cause your job to give you a promotion. I cause a stranger to give you some money. I cause a stranger to help you. God says, I cause men to give into your lap. I cause them to drop blessings in your lap when you give. Sow a seed, you'll reach a harvest. That's what my word is to you, and I hold my promise. Even now, lift that right hand and say, what I say unto one, I say unto all, watch and pray and love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. I want you to look at that neighbor and say, neighbor, look at me, neighbor, look at me, neighbor. Before you leave, you owe me love, so give it up. Also for the viewer and audience, amen, there's uh, several ways in which you can give. If you want to give, you can look on the screen, amen, you can go to our website, you can go to Givelify, you can also go to Cash App. These are ways in which you can give, amen, you can look behind you if you want to give Cash App, if you're in the room and you want to give Cash App, amen, or any other way, amen, it's right there on the screen before you, amen, you can go there and do that. I mean, I've, I've told many people the wrong Cash App and they sent our money to other people, so please read the screen. <laughs> I won't tell them no, uh, amen, that I am church. We need your help. We do. We do need your help. It's important, amen, that you all, amen, amen, bless us. This is the first of the month, and they're going to be looking for their money. <laughs> I, wish, I wish church was free. Free Church ain't free. Isn't that the truth? Church ain't free. We can come We can come to church, but church ain't free. These lights, uh, they're blinding me, but they, they cost. They cost to keep on. Uh, y'all Y'all wouldn't come to church if it was dark in here, wouldn't you? If it was dark, no, I'm no candlelight, no nothing. You can't see now. You can't even see me. You can't see nobody. Uh, you just bumping into stuff and bruising your knees and bumping your toes. You wouldn't come. I wouldn't go. I, not me. I want some light. I want to be able to see. And you know, I, I was a, I was a boy scout and I was in the army. They didn't light no fire. I disappeared. I had to see. <laughs> I want to see what's going on. But you use your night vision. I'm closing my eyes and I'm going somewhere where I can see. <laughs> it's the truth. But listen, thank y'all again. I love y'all. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hug everybody at one time. Give me one big hug with everybody. I want y'all to know I appreciate y'all. Y'all made this service what it is today. I promise y'all, if y'all wasn't here, I wouldn't have preached like that. I wouldn't. Yes, I would. <laughs> I'll preach to one like it's 1,000. I will. I will. Because it's important that we understand you are valuable. You, your value to God is why God allowed me to pour out the way I was pouring out. Because if he didn't value you, we just got the drop and benediction. And y'all have been looking at me like, why did I burn my gas? Go all the way over there. And that man ain't said nothing. But, <laughs> but God wants you to leave here full. And if somebody asks you, say, how, how was service? What, what, what did the preacher preach about? You say, let us pray. <laughs> Lord have mercy. See, from, from now on, if somebody asks me, say, pray for me, I'm going to say, let us pray. I'll do that anyway, y'all. I don't care where I am. Publix, the bank. I could be in an arena full of people. Somebody asks me uh, to pray for them. I'm not going to say, okay, let us pray. Because that's important. Because... 
you, what, you, what you do is you let that person know that your prayer is valuable to them and they mean something to you for you to stop and pray for them right then and right there it's important thank y'all again blessing amen peace we didn't have benediction y'all looking at me like we ain't having a benediction but we have been uh, also we need you to flip this up my my friend Jesus calling. Amen. We hope you were blessed by the worship experience at the I Am Church. Make sure you share this word with your loved ones. Remember, there are three ways you can give. Number one is website giving. Open up your web browser and type in www.tiacjax.org and click on the giving tab. Number two is giving through Cash App. Open up the Cash App on your Android or iOS device and enter your amount you like to send and search the I Am Church and click send and you will get a confirmation. Number three is using the Giblify app on your Android or iOS device. Thanks for watching and we hope you are blessed. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel at TIAC Jax and like us on Facebook and Instagram. And for those who just gave their life to Christ, please visit TIACJax.org backslash salvation and fill out the contact form. Thanks for watching and have a blessed week.